World War I and the conscription issue. Before we get started, there are four things you need to understand. Number one, what conscription is. Conscription is when the government forces you to join the military. If you don't do it, you can go to jail. Number two is the constitution. The constitution is a set of laws by which a country is run. Everybody has to adhere to these laws. Number three is what a referendum is. A referendum is a vote to change the constitution. Only the voting public can change the constitution. And lastly, you need to understand that the Australian Constitution allows for the conscription, but only for the defence of Australia, not to attack another country. So conscription is compulsory enrolment, especially for the armed forces. It's also known as the draft. And unlike many other countries fighting in World War I, Australia did not have conscription, and by mid-1916, the government was finding it very difficult to get men to join the army. This is because people started realising that war wasn't all it was cracked up to be, and that people actually died. Many politicians, Protestant church leaders and businessmen urged the federal Labor government to introduce conscription, but this was opposed by the government of the day. Many Labor supporters believed that conscription was unjust and was completely at odds with what their vision of Australia should be. They argued that there shouldn't be a conscription of working men because there was no conscription of the wealthy classes. They saw the supporters of conscription as a selfish, comfortable class who wanted to force others to kill and die while they continued to make lots of money on the back of the war. In 1916, however, William Hughes, the Australian Labor Prime Minister, returned from inspecting the Western Front and he was convinced that Australia should introduce conscription. This became a divisive issue because in 1916 and 1917 there were campaigns for and against conscription. People who supported conscription called their opponents traitors and cowards. They sent white feathers to them in the mail and they believed that these guys were going to help the Germans win the war. But people who opposed conscription described their opponents as murderers, war profiteers and the destroyers of democracy because they were taking away the freedom of choice that people had to join the army or not to join the army. Religious divisions surfaced as the Catholic Church opposed conscription while the Protestant Church favoured it. Throughout the campaigns for and against conscription, propaganda was released. Now, propaganda is political advertising. Its purpose is to convince you about an issue. Here are two very famous uh, pieces of propaganda that were used during the campaigns. However, conscription was defeated. Remember that a referendum is a direct vote in which an entire country is asked to either accept or reject a particular proposal. And remember that the Australian Constitution only allows for conscription in the defence of Australia. So conscription was defeated at two referendums. The first referendum was held in October 1916 and the second referendum was held in December 1917. Conscription is still only allowed in Australia for the defence of Australia and not to attack another country.